mappings. In Solidity, whenever we want to store sets of data in a very efficient way, we can make use of mappings. At the core of a mapping, it's essentially creating some sort of dictionary where there's a key that is basically mapped to some kind of value. And the key has to be unique. The key can also be a number of different types, such as strings, bytes, uns, and so forth, as long as it's a unique value that is mapped or referencing some kind of value, which can be a data type. A mapping consists of many of these key value pairs. Look at this example over here. This is just to illustrate the point. Here we have some kind of integer or unsigned integer mapping to a string. 0 is Daniel, 1 is Ashley, 2 is Sammy. And here's an example of an address mapping to an unsigned integer. And as you can see, each address is unique. If it were to be the same address, it will simply overwrite the existing value. Here's an example of string to boolean. And again, here's an address to an array. Now let's take a look at how we can create our own mapping. You start by writing the mapping keyword and then the key that you want to use. In our case, I want to use an address. Then you specify this arrow and to what value. For me, I'm going to use an unsigned integer. We're going to make this public and I'm going to actually refer to this mapping as my users. Now, like I said, we can also get different mappings, maybe uint to boolean, bytes to uint, address to uint array, and many more. For our example, we are simply going to focus on a user mapping. And maybe an even better example is to change this to a boolean, an address to boolean. And the reason why is maybe we're creating some kind of subscription contract. And I want to see if a address is subscribed to whatever this contract is for. First things first, let's go ahead and deploy the contract and read from this mapping. We can see here it is. And it works kind of the same as an array. We need to provide an index where this is going to read from. In this case, we need to provide the key. So our key needs to be of type address. So I'm going to simply copy this address and paste it in here and then click on it. We can see that it says false. The address is not subscribed, but we haven't even added the address. So how does it know? Well, with mappings, if you search for a key and the value was never set, then it will simply give you the default value of this type. Let's now see how to set the value of a mapping. I'm going to add this function and it has a very long name. It says set user subscription status. You can call your function whatever you like. I think this is descriptive enough. The function also takes in two parameters, an address, the user address, and a boolean, the status of the subscription. We are going to use this function to set this user's mapping value. So how do we do that? Well, we start off by writing users, our mapping, and then like an array, we specify a key. Now, what key do we want to update? Well, this is the user's address that we are going to pass into this function. Now, if we leave it like this, we actually will get the returned Boolean value from this mapping. This is how we access it. But instead of reading the value, we want to assign a new value. And what value do we want to assign? Well, the status that we are going to pass in as well. So this is now all set. We're going to remove this and redeploy the contract. Now we have a function to set the user's status, the subscription status, and also read from the user's mapping. Let's copy this address. And now I'm going to pass in the address and read the value. We can see that it's still false. Now for this function, I'm going to expand it, provide the address and say that I actually want this to be true. Transact. And now when we read the value, we can see this is true. If we select a different address, copy that one and we paste it in, we can see that this user is still false. But the previous user is true. Now, if we wanted to set another address, we can. We can simply specify it in here, set it and read the value of this address. And this is true. Now, like I said before, we can use also kind of similar functions that an array has. For example, if we want to access the mapping, I've created a new function over here, get user subscription, and I'm passing in the address. 
I'm returning a Boolean and it is view. Now here we simply pass the mapping, users, and in the square brackets we specify what key, the user's address. And optionally we can also delete something from a mapping by specifying the delete keyword and then going and say users and provide the key. Now this will just default to the original value or the default value of the value type. Now although you have seen this delete when we talked about arrays, just know that that's where the similarities stop. Arrays are used when you want to loop over elements and with mappings you simply can't because we cannot always predict what keys a mapping will have. So arrays are for lists and mappings are dictionaries, key value pairs. Even though iterating over a normal mapping is not possible, you can achieve it by creating a data structure on top of them and iterating over that. That is a bit advanced and out of the scope of this video. However, what I do want to show you is something called working with nested mappings, mappings inside of mappings. To illustrate this, let's comment out these two functions first and change our user's mapping. Instead of saying user subscriptions is the direct subscription, a user can have different types of subscriptions. So instead of an address to bool mapping, we'll map from an address to another mapping, which is going to map a uint to a boolean. So our user mapping will now exist of an address that is mapped to a uint, which is going to be the subscription type, and then boolean, true or false, if they have that subscription. Now we have to update our functions accordingly because we can no longer just set the status like this. We now have an extra variable and that is our subtype. Let's just call it subtype. And what we need to do now is say on the user's address for the specific subtype, set this to the correct status. To get the subscription now, we will need the extra subtype. So we're going to pass in the address and then also the UN subtype and then the same. We're just simply going to say give us the subtype value for this address subscription. And for the delete user subscription, we are going to do the exact same. We'll add our subtype and then here we'll specify what type we want to delete from this user. To make sure our logic works, let's go ahead and deploy the contract. Now we have a few different functions. So let's go ahead and copy this address and to get the value we need to pass in the address and the subtype. We can expand this and see we will provide an address and let's check subtype maybe one. We can call it and see that this is false. So let's make sure that the user is subscribed to type one. We can use this function, expand it. We provide the address one and our status will be true. Now we can hit transact. If we check the status of subtype 1 for this address, we see it is true. Now we can either go and change this back to false for this address, or we can use this delete function. We can simply pass in the address and number 1. Transact, and if we check it now, this is back to false. And that's how you can work with nested mappings. But in general, a normal mapping will be fine, especially if you're just starting out using Solidity.